And hello, this is the first part of the chapter 6.3, and we will talk about orthogonal decomposition. Uh, and before we were talking about the uh, projections, and we discovered that for every subspace W of Rn uh, and any big given vector y, we can find projection y hat of our vector y on the uh, subspace W. And that projection is unique. And not only it's unique, it's actually this projection vector is the closest one in the subspace W to the vector y. And um, in other words, we can think about it as that we can actually split our Rn and the two different subspaces. One of them is W, and the other one is complementary orthogonal part of the W, or we denote it by this, uh, this kind of like, like a T letter flipped upside down. Um, so basically, if we have two subspaces, each one with a basis vector, we can actually decompose our vector y into the two subcomponents, which we call z1 and z2. So z1 would be formed by the span of basis vectors of w, and z2 will be uh, spanned by basis vectors of our complement orthogonal space of w. Okay, let's see how that works. Let's look at the example of R5. So we have an orth orthogonal basis, which consists of the five vectors from U1 to U5. So we can write down our vector y in coordinates of our orthogonal basis. So we basically have a five weights, C1, and each weight multiplied by the basis vector. C1 times C1 plus C2 times U2 plus all the way to C5 times E5. So uh, now um, let's consider the subspace W, which spanned by the first two basis vectors, U1 and U2. So let's try to write down our vector Y as the sum of two orthogonal components, the Z1, which belong to the space W, and the second component from, back, uh, from Z2 from the orthogonal subspace to the W. Okay, uh, let's start writing down our vector Y. It can be any vector, but we can express this vector Y in the coordinate of our basis. So basically every weight multiplied by the basis vector. And we know that the first two basis vectors are formed by the uh, span the, uh, into, by the uh, subspace W. And we denote these two terms in our linear combination as Z1. The rest of the term we come back together and for, call them Z2. And our Z1, of course, is span of the first two vectors u1 and u2, and z3 is spanned by the rest of the basis vector from u3 to u5. So now our most important question is, is this uh, component z2 coming from the complementary orthogonal space of w? In other words, does the z2 or component of z2 is orthogonal to the vector basis formed by the first two basis vectors, u1 and u2. Of course, if we, our question is something is orthogonal, we of course go ahead and just to try to calculate linear uh, dot product. Is dot product is equal to zero? Now it's orthogonal. Okay, let's take our component z2 and multiply it by the vector basis vector one, u1. So, and again, we can use uh, the property of the dot product to basically factor out our vector u1. So we form like three different dot products. Uh, the question is, is sum of all these three products is equal to zero? And this is important to remember. 
that we are dealing with orthogonal bases. All our basis vector from U1 to U5 are orthogonal to each other. So the product U1 with any other basic vector will be equal zero. So all these terms should be equal zero. In other words, Z2 is orthogonal to U1. And we can do the same type of calculation to confirm that Z2 is also um, orthogonal to vector U2. So indeed, we show that our second component is complementary to our subspace W formed by U1 and U2. And this is how we can apply and expand any, absolutely any company, any vector into the combination of its projection and an orthogonal subspace. Okay, now it would be great if you can go to the end of the chapter and try to actually practice to break in into the subspace and its complementary orthogonal subspace.